You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. Something we like to talk about uh, across the LCMS in our churches, uh, we like to talk about life ministry and celebrating the sanctity of life. And we have someone really exciting to introduce to our Coffee Hour listeners today. We have a Deaconess Tiffany Maynard, the new LCMS Director of Life Ministry, joining us. Thanks so much for being with us today on the Coffee Hour. Thanks for having me. So first, you were installed uh, during this coronavirus pandemic, which I'm sure has been strange, um, and you're, you're also deployed along with most of the rest of us. Uh, what has the last few weeks or so of, of this uh, transition been like for you? Well, it has been strange, but it, it's really been very good. Um, it's been a blessing to get to know people all across our synod, and we're all kind of in the same boat, uh, working from home, and and so for that, it's um, feels like we're in this together. So <laughs> it's it's uh, been a unique start, but but still very good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, talking about life ministry, what does that actually uh, mean when we talk about life ministry? I think so often we jump to uh, talking about um, uh, abortion and um, and promoting um, moms who are expecting babies. But what what else do we mean uh, when we talk about life ministry? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because we want to think broadly about life ministry. I mean, life ministry is is uh, sharing Christ's love with others in, in body and soul. It's it's upholding the sanctity of human life, um, but also uh, promoting good health and wellness um, through education and, and service, um, through just lots of domestic and international programs. LCMS Life Ministry uh, often says we carry the banner that life is sacred and that all people matter to God. So. Um, when we think of that as a broad definition, we're, we're looking to provide resources to individuals and families, working with districts, international mission regions, church workers, and congregations. And um, we, we focus on uh, the things that, that uh, the experiences of suffering that people have in our world, like society's assault on God's gift of life and marriage and family, but also suffering um, in pain and isolation and brokenness caused caused by the original sin. So uh, life ministry is the defense and nurture of the vulnerable and the defenseless, like you mentioned. Uh, but it also, we look at, at things like godly marriage, um, life, and, and family, and, and even promoting the holistic well-being of church workers. So there's, there's a lot um, in, in life ministry. So tell us your story. Why is life ministry important to you? Well, it starts um, with with God's love and mercy, right? God God had compassion on me, and He created me, uh, and so He empowers me to do the same. It's it's all about mercy. Um, God is the creator and, and author of life, and and it's He who gives value to life. So, um, for me as a deaconess, um, life ministry is, is super important because because of just that, um, because of what Christ has done. So then, taking that. Uh, to a broader perspective, why should we uh, care about and learn more about life ministry and these life issues uh, as individuals in our own congregations and as part of a of a broader church body as well? Yeah, well, uh, that's what's so wonderful about the LCMS. We've got some tremendous gifts to share with the entire world. Um, we have fantastic um, theology and, and understanding of mercy and um, and life ministry as an important um, mercy ministry of our, our church is something that we have to share with with the world but with our communities and um, we understand uh, suffering and um, Christ's presence with us during suffering in, in ways that it's, it's really important to share with others. Um, we also understand God's promises and his, his actions, and it's you know the very gospel that we have to share. So that's um, what life ministry is about um, for us as a church body, is making sure that our, our neighbors um, hear that really important message of, of God's love and mercy for everyone. What does that look like practically in my own vocations, or not just mine, but it, what does it look like in each of our own vocations to promote life on a daily basis? 
Yeah, we all have an opportunity to share that human lives are valuable with the people who are right around us. Um, God gives us our neighbors, and uh, we we get to share God's love with them. So that can be in our vocations of um, being a um, a husband, a wife, a, a son, a daughter, mother, father, coworker, um, next door neighbor to the, the people who live right um, right next to us. Uh, all of all the vocations that we've been given uh, by God, we have the opportunity to promote life. So we can we can witness to to Christ to the people that, that God's put around us. Uh, we can winsomely speak up and and say when we see see things out in society in our world that um, are counter to um, how God has designed life and, and marriage and the family to be. And we can say, you know, that's not truth. That's not wholesome. It's not godly. Um, and then demonstrate with our actions and our words exactly what truth and, and love are and, and what God's given us. Um, we can care for others. I, I've said the word mercy a whole bunch, but that's really <laughs> what it is. Um, God um, caring for us and then um, empowering us to, to, to uh, care for others and to, to bear his mercy out to the rest of the world. So there's so many ways that we can be doing that. And it, it really um, becomes specific. Um, as an individual as to exactly um, where God's placed us and who he's put around us. There's so many opportunities, uh, even as we're still in our homes, uh, maybe not seeing as many people face to face as we usually do or used to. Uh, There's still so many opportunities to listen to people and to hear their stories um, and to to empathize with, with our neighbors, even if that is you know through a through a Facebook Messenger conversation or, or something um, to 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 walk with our neighbors and and to share God's love with them. I think uh, is is that something that that you feel strongly about uh, walking hand in hand with with the people who are around us. Oh, absolutely. And I'm so glad that you, you pointed that out because uh, one thing I've been seeing for a number of months now is that this um, pandemic has given us, um, everyone across the globe, the opportunity to think an awful lot about life and about um, how we impact others with our actions, whether it's the decision um, to wear a mask or um, to go out and, and or not go out quite so often. Um, people are everyone is thinking about life and their impact on others in ways we haven't before. And, uh, you know, it's my prayer that it's generating some, some empathy um, may not always be immediately obvious from some <laughs> things that we see um, in, in the mainstream media, but uh, I, I think particularly Christians and, and LCMS Christians um, have an opportunity to, to really think about how they um, can feel a- along with others. So, um, Think about weeping with those who weep and rejoicing with those who rejoice. That's what empathy is, and um, uh, and that's you know really important as as we walk through the, these pandemic times together and um, consider what other people are going through and and how we are in this together and experiencing it um, together. Absolutely. So you're you're still still pretty new in this position. Uh, so what are you looking forward to most uh, as you get to talk with people around the synod and and uh, plan for the future? Oh, what what I'm most looking forward to, and actually I'm already um, been experiencing a bit, but but I know there's more to come, and and that's with really uh, getting to know all of the LCMS folks out there who are already serving in LCMS Life Ministry. Um, we're getting to learn what their stories are, what they're doing in in their churches and in their communities, and then um, looking how we can um, collaborate and work together, um, congregation members, church workers pro-life leaders, um, various organizations, our recognized service organizations, and um, other church bodies and, and um, nonprofit organizations in our, in our country and, and really even uh, um, our mission partners around the globe. Uh, it's, it's the body of Christ, uh, getting to experience the, the body of Christ more fully that I, I look forward to. And um, I don't know, our, our witness is so much stronger when we stand together professing life and confessing Christ that it, it's quite inspiring to me to, to get to know all of the people who are out there doing these um, really important um, life ministry uh, activities. How can we stay informed about what's going on in life ministry? 
Well, we've got a lot of information out on lcms.org website and the new Making Disciples for Life uh, Internet Resource Center. So those are a couple of, of ways. I mean, there's uh, our Life Ministry newsletter uh, that you can sign up for. Uh, there's a, a sign up on lcms.org um, for Life Ministry for that. Uh, social media uh, on our, our Facebook page and, and Instagram. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm really interested in, in talking directly with people. So we've set up a, an email address, just lifeministry at lcms.org, because I would love to hear from folks out there who are engaged in, in life ministry in their congregations. Um, there's, I'm sure, thousands of other people in, involved in LCMS Life Ministry, maybe hundreds of thousands of people in, <laughs> in LCMS Life Ministry. So we really want to work together and continue serving and, and create more opportunities for others who want to be active. Do you have any encouragement for listeners uh, who maybe have thought about life ministry or, or know of a, of a way to be involved but haven't quite taken that first step? Do you have any encouragement for listeners who are interested in in serving and, and want to serve in life ministry? I think it's fantastic to start thinking and, and praying about it and uh, looking right around you. We, we talked about uh, vocation and serving the people nearest to you. I mean, just to look around your own, your family or the, the people who live right around you and, and consider what are what are their needs and what do I see going on in their lives? So how can I uh, be present with them and, and walk with them through that? So that's one encouragement is, is to look nearest, <laughs> just physically mm -hmm. look right around where you're standing right now. Um, but I, I think there's also encouragement for people who have been engaged with life ministry for a long time, because it, it can get a little discouraging looking around at our world and, Oh, maybe thinking there, we're not seeing the changes that I, I'd like to see, or I've, I've been working tirelessly and um, just feeling alone. And for that, I think it's important to be encouraged that that we're not alone as, as individuals. We, there's brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and of course, we've got our, our Lord's promises if we might feel tired and discouraged. So I always, I always like to um, look to scripture and remember that that, um, well, like in Second Corinthians chapter four, that that we're, we're told uh, by our Lord to not lose heart. So uh, that's that's the encouragement is to keep focused on on um, our Lord, on God's word. And remember that the Holy Spirit is is the one who works through His word to transform the hearts of people. Um, we get to we get to to bear that word into the the lives of, of those around us. But and that's a, a tremendous joy and a, and a blessing. And, and that's really the the true encouragement. That's wonderful. Deaconess Tiffany Manor, a new LCMS Director of Life Ministry. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Coffee Hour. Thanks. It's been great. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.